Athlan was Athlan, welcome back. Boy, we are just speeding through this course, and I hope you're enjoying the lovely April springtime out there, because we definitely do record all these lessons in order. Today we're going to do something that should be fairly easy and simple, and I'm sure you'll appreciate that. So we're talking about something called collective nouns, and... This is something we have in English, we have in just about every language, and it's pretty easy to remember, so let's celebrate that. Now, of course, putting this all into perspective, this is uh, something you're not going to see all that often, and it's not that big of a deal. So never let it be said that we tried to claim everything was of equal importance here. So let's get right to it, shall we? Okay, so... Let's review. As you know, in English, we don't have an article for a or an, right? We just say kitab is a book, sayara is a car, and so forth. Now, as in English, you know, we distinguish between chicken and a chicken, right? You say, I like chicken. That's like the generic term for chicken, or apple, apple pie means it has apple in it, but uh, there's a difference between saying it's a pie of one apple, okay? You would sound weird if you said, I like a chicken. People would think you were pretty darn strange and would not want to pursue that line uh, of reasoning with you very far. So this is what we call a collective noun. This is something that refers to the whole category, okay? Same thing happens in Arabic. And as always, what am I going to tell you? Of course, it's easier and more consistent in Arabic. You know that by now. Very simple. So for these, these types of nouns, you are familiar with words like dajaj. Everybody knows dajaj. It was one of the first foods you learned to say. Ana uheb dajaj. Tufa. Tufa, right, is apple. Now notice the difference, right? Apple, an apple. Chicken, a chicken. Well, in Arabic, the uh, the difference is when we put this tamabuta on the end, this is what they call the noun of instance, which is the opposite of the collective noun. All right, this is the collective, chicken, and a chicken is one instance of a chicken. Right. So... Dajaj just means generic chicken. If you say, Ana uheb dajaj, means you like chicken. You could go into a restaurant, and on the menu, it will say dajaj. And that's what you get. Why? Because you're not getting one entire chicken. You're probably getting some portion of a chicken. You're probably getting parts that came from several chickens, exactly where you don't want to know. Okay. Now, if you were to go into an Arab restaurant and order dajaja, and this is actually an item on uh, some Arab menus, you will get a whole entire stuffed chicken because that's what this means. This is a chicken. Tufah refers to apple. Tufaha is one actual apple. So let's look at some examples, shall we? Okay, so if you said to the restaurant, Urid, Dajaj, wa ruz. Of course, you'll get chicken and rice. If you said, Urid Dajaja wa Aruz, and assuming they understood you and actually had one, they would give you one whole stuffed chicken plus rice. Or even if they understood what you meant, you would still sign, sound weird. You would be like someone who went into a restaurant and said, I want one chicken and rice, please. Well, they'd know what you meant, but you would sound kind of funny. Let's look at some other examples. And um, most of these are probably words you've seen before, and you'll see how it makes sense. Okay, so semek is fish. Semeka is a fish. Okay, so you know, notice the difference. If you're talking about a fish, it's a semeka. If you say, I don't uheb semek, la akal semek, I don't eat fish, this is the generic term. Now, it's not only foods. Word, word you probably know is uh, rose. Worda is one rose. Okay, word, worda. Okay, um, so when you talk about the the smell of rose, you would use this or the color, right? You'd use this. Worda, which is actually a a 
uh, female name refers to one actual rose. Now, as in English, these nouns can still have plurals. So let's look. There's chicken, which is just generic for some amount of chicken. A chicken, which is one, and chickens, which are several. So notice the difference. So this is a special collective term. It's a generic term. We have apple, apple pie, apple cobbler, an apple, or apples. Probably to make apple pie, you need apples, but we don't specify. So what am I telling you? There's three different quantities of these nouns. Singular, plural, and then of course there's dual if you had two chickens, and this generic collective term. Now it's important to note here that not every word is going to have these. Okay, so something like, you know, bait. There's no bait beta, like house in general and a house. This is only for things that we typically use in a collective sense. Okay, so, for example, semic, fish. Semica is a fish. A smack, plural of fishes. So when you're talking about this, you really are probably talking about a whole bunch of fish, but notice the difference. Again, warda, well, we lost the one in the middle, right? Word, warda, the plural of, of this is warud, meaning roses. So if you, if you had a dozen roses, right, that's what, well, that would be warda, okay, because it's over ten. If you had half a dozen, they would be warud. But if you're just talking about rose color in general or the smell of rose, it would be word. Okay, so it's just like English. Just be aware of it. Is this the most important thing you're going to learn? No. Uh, is the adafa the most important thing you're going to learn? Uh, it's probably up there. Okay, so how does this work in practice? I know that's what you're saying. Okay, so... Uh, if you go into a restaurant or a, a store, you can order this stuff. And in fact, if you go throughout the Middle East, you'll see these juice bars uh, right out on the street, and they have fresh produce, and they crush it for juice right in front of you. I know this is not like the kind of place that's uh, in, inside the fitness center where you can hang out and drink smoothies and pose in front of the mirror and never exercise. It's not like that kind of juice bar. So... Juice, very, very popular in the Middle East. What do we have here? Asir tufa. Well, asir, asir is juice. Any kind of juice. Asir tufar, asir botakal, asir anab, asir khashab, and so forth. Many, many kinds of juice. Uh, asir ananas, pineapple juice. Very good. Okay. So, asir tufa, this is what we call it. If you order that, you will get this, not in, the, in this particular um, container, but this here is asir tufa. Notice it's the generic collective term, and you should notice that this whole thing is a what? Yes, it is an idafa, juice of apple, an apple being the generic term. Now, how many apples went into making this? Probably more than one. We can see it's even got two different colors. So we use this this generic term, asir tufa, asir bortukal, asir ananas. Ananas is pineapple, the generic term. Now, asir tufa, not to be confused with the classic war movie, A Bridge Too Far. Now, if you were to order asir tufaha, because you learned this word off your flashcards or off Google Translate as meaning apple, well, you'll get this. Juice of one apple, which, let me tell you, is not very much if you've ever tried to make juice. So I think you have the point. We don't wish to belabor the point. Let us see, let us see how Hans handles this. All right, this is the Hans Ver page, having to deal with fish under the root semica. Don't look at the generic root because it doesn't have much to do with it. But you scan down the nouns, you find semic. Semic, and you can see is fish. Now notice, this is the way he writes it, collective. Semic, meaning when he has this, it means this is the collective term for fish. Generic fish. 
from a small tiny portion of fish to billions and billions of fish. Okay, so he says says that. So that is the collect. You'll find the same thing if you look up tufa, uh, anub. And, and most of what we're talking about is food, but it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be. Okay, it can be something of flowers. It can be any number of things. Okay, so this tells you that that's a collective noun. Here, notice the noun. He's saying noun of unity, meaning the noun for one is just, and he puts tamabuta, means put a tamabuta on the end of this. This is by far the most common way to do it. So semic, what this is telling you is semic is a generic term for fish. Semica is one fish. Okay. And the plural, asmac. Now, interesting thing, notice in English, the collective term is fish. The plural is fish. Uh, the the singular is fish. In some rare cases, you can say fishes, uh, right? But we use the same word for each one of these. Whereas in Arabic, at least they're distinguishing. If you hear fish, is that one fish, two fish, red fish, or blue fish? Old fish, new fish? We don't know. Okay. And he even goes down, he lists it here. Notice, uh, semica is a fish and, and so forth. Okay. But this is this is typical. So for words that have a collective, uh, this is this is the word for it. Um, now, just a last point. You may be wondering, and probably not, what about words that do not have a collective? Like let's say sayara. Sayara is a car. What if you want to talk about cars in general? Okay, well, we just use the plural, sayarat. And in Arabic, typically, you make that definite, asayarat. If you want to say just, you know, cars are expensive, meaning all cars, asayarat ghalia. Okay, so that's for things that, that don't have this. Okay, but I think you get the point. There are some exercises to practice, but again, keep this in perspective. It's not that big a deal, but it is something to be aware of. Okay, so we wish you all the luck. We'll see you next time from my great friend, Jimmy the Ostrich. Huh? You were expecting to see a dog. Here is an ostrich, my friend Jimmy, who lives on the lovely island of Curaçao. Uh, we will see you next time. Shukran jazilan wa atamin lakum yom sa'id wa kul najah fi dirasatakum. Insha'Allah. Shukran jazilan. Ma salam.